the day of the feast of St. Simon and Jude, Apostles. And we'll go ahead and read good to be here again in Pittsburgh. Read here the From St. Paul's under the Ephesians chapter 4 of the Feast of St. Simon the Jew. Brethren, to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the giving of Christ. Wherefore he saith, ascending on high, he led captivity captive. He gave gifts, he gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but because he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave him, he gave him apostles, and some, uh, some prophets, and others some evangelists, and others some pastors and doctors, for the perfecting of the saints, for, uh, for the work of, 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 minister, of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ, until we all meet unto the unity of faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect uh, a man, and unto the measure of the age of the fullness of Christ. And the Gospel. Take that according to St. John, chapter 15. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, These things I command you, that you love one another, and, and, and if the world hate you, know ye that it hath hated me before you. If you had been of the world, the world would love, it, would love its own. And because you are not of the world, and, uh, but, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember my word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than the master and his master. If they have per 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 persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have, if they had, if they have kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for any, any for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not, not done among them the works that no other man uh, hath done, they would not have sinned. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But, the word that, but that the word may be fulfilled which is written in their law, they hated me without cause. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father, and the Holy Ghost, amen. May our Lord, on Holy Thursday night, is about ready to go into the great battle of Good Friday. First he's going to sweat his blood, then he's going to go to the cross, and he speaks about the world. Here he speaks about the world in John chapter 15, and during that uh, sermon, of, during his discussion, three-hour discussion with the apostles, and then later on that night, before he leaves, he will pray just before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in that prayer, he will pause in the midst of his prayer, and he will say, I pray not for the world. We'll pray for many things, and he'll pray not for the world. And so that to make it very clear that he is at enmity with the world, we know that Christ is at enmity with the devil. Everyone knows that uh, God hates the devil, and the devil hates God. No one really has a plan to make Satan Christ's friend, or to make Christ Satan's friend, or to make a truce between them. We recognize there can never be a truce between God and Satan. But what about the world? Was not the world created by God? God created the heavens and the earth. But this thing called the world, he did not create. When we say the world in the sacred scripture in the Holy Gospel, he's referring to those souls, the people, the mass, the mob. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ created two kinds of things inside of us. He made us individuals, and He made us a part of society. We're a part of the society of the church. We're part of the society of humanity. We're part of the society of the entire universe. We're part of the society of the mystical body of Christ and the society of men created by God. And as individuals, we are creatures made by God for His glory. And our individuality is related to society and our society in relation to individuality. But then there is something called the world. The world is a kind of mush. The world doesn't have a precise definition. The world is the common opinion of men. The world is the ordinary man. The world is the way and spirit of the ordinary man. And this spirit is the spirit of hell. And this spirit will always hate Christ. And will hate the apostles. What is one of the signs that will happen? It is written in their law. Our Lord Jesus Christ is quite angry. He's getting ready to be crucified by the Jews. The Jews are going to be the ones who are going to arrange for his crucifixion. He made them, the, the, the people, the chosen people, they were chosen to be the people of the Messiah, that he would take his flesh from their flesh, so that he is of Jewish flesh. But then these Jews would then arrange for his death and would be the ones responsible for his death. And they would say, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. But their law, he refers to it as their law in the gospel today. Their law is our law. Their law is the law of every man. It is the law of God. But he says it is written in their law, the very last words of the gospel today, they have hated me without cause, gratis. They have hated me for nothing. Now, this must be remembered by the followers of Christ. It must be remembered. There are many bishops, many priests, there are many souls that say, we need to have, we, we catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Well, obviously we catch more flies with honey than we catch with vinegar. So we need to have a soft approach in order that they might come in. And then they land upon the stickiness of our honey, and we grab them, and we capture them. And so as a matter of how do we conquer the world, how do we convert souls? Now notice the Catholic Church loves souls. The Catholic Church is out for the saving of souls. And the Catholic Church is out for conquering the entirety of the world. Conquering is a matter of battle. It's a matter of war. And when you conquer someone, you must overcome it. You must overtake it. You must defeat it. When you capture a soul, you take that soul and bring him into your kingdom. And what is our kingdom? It is the kingdom of Christ. We want to go out to those souls that are now belonging to the world and take them away from the world. But notice, the world hates Christ. And we see also here the power. Why do they hate Christ? They hate Him for nothing. They don't have a reason to hate Him. Well, the reason why they hate Him is in themselves, not in Christ. There's nothing wrong with Christ that causes them to hate Christ. It's themselves. It's like a girl... Who, who, who weighs 900 pounds. She sees a girl who is beautiful and thin. She hates her. Why does he hate her? Because she's 900 pounds. She doesn't hate the girl because the girl is skinny. She hates the girl because she's 900 pounds. See yourself. So in fact, the reason for her, there's no reason for her to hate the skinny girl. The reason is found in her own self. Therefore, she hates the skinny girl for nothing. But the reason for the hate is found inside of herself. Because she's not what she's supposed to be. And therefore she hates those that are what they are supposed to be. Now remember the world. The world is the, is the place of the vast majority of souls. And what is the problem of the vast majority of souls? They're not where they're supposed to be. And therefore, when they see someone who is where he's supposed to be, they hate him. They are not believing what they are supposed to believe. When they see someone that believes what they're supposed to believe, they hate him. And this is made clear in the gospel. He speaks to his apostles about love and particularly about hate. And he says, at that time Jesus said to his disciples these things, I, I commend you that you love one another. If the world hate you, know ye that it hath hated me before you. 
If you had been of the world, the world would not would love you. But because you are not you because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. When Christ chooses us, here he's speaking specifically to the apostles, the priests. The priests are taken out of the world. <coughs> But also not only the priests, but all Catholics are taken out of the world. I have chosen you out of the world. The world hates me, and it will hate you. Do not be surprised when you discover that the world hates you. If the world does not hate you, it's because you belong to the world. We find now Pope Francis, uh, seen a picture recently of him as Superman. Pope Francis the Superman. He's loved in South America and some places because he's like a superman. He's a superman who says homosexuality is okay. He's a superman that says you don't have to belong to the true religion. He's a superman that doesn't believe in the Catholic God. He's a superman that says the world is that we have to, we have to take care of a, a saving Mother Earth. And he's a superman because of his love of sin. He's a superman because of his rep repetition of the world. He's a superman because he's a man of the world. He has not been taken out of the world. Pope Francis is not out of the world. He's in it. He's in it. When he came and visited the United States, he had the rock singers singing, and, the, and they, they were singing the rock songs, and they were very happy that the Pope was coming in as a man of the world. And so he's a man of the world. He's not a man of God. And even Putin noticed that. Who himself is not a man of God, who belongs to a false religion, who's not following God himself. But even he noted this man, Pope Francis, he is not a man of God. Now we can be a man of God or we can be men of the world. And these are men of the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the first thing he said, when you and I chose you twelve apostles, I took you out of the world. I took you out of it. Why did I take you out of the world? That you would stay out of the world. And then the world hated me. And you will discover that the world will hate you. If you've been in the world, the world, will, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember my word that I said to you, the servant is not greater than his master. If they, had, if, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. There is not a single case of a saint, not one. There is not one single saint that lived without persecution, including in the days of the age of the faith of the church. St. Francis expelled by his own Franciscans from a monastery. St. Alphonsus expelled from the Redemptorist order that he founded. St. Benedict, they tried to poison him and kill him. And the same is true of St. John Bosco, trying to blow up his boys' school to get people off the streets. There's John Bosco. Who of modern man could be unhappy with John Bosco? He was doing social work. He was taking poor people off the streets. He was about ending poverty. What a wonderful guy. They tried to kill him. St. Anthony Mary Claret. They tried to kill him six different times. One time when they went to stab him, he was holding his bravery and he held his bravery up and the knife went straight through his bravery. The fact is, no one who loves God, as priest of God, no priest of God who speaks the divine truth, no priest of God who does the work of God can go through life without being persecuted or hated at any time in human history. They hated Elias. They hated, they hated Daniel and threw him in, in the lion's den. They hated Moses. They complained about Moses in the desert. They hated Joshua. They turned against each one who was a follower of God. And there is not going to be an exception and if you're an exception, guess what? You're not. You're not. If you are not hated by the world, and not, not hated by, by the men of the modern world, then you are not the friend of God. The priest, however, he will not only be hated, and here it is made sure, made Christ points out, the world will hate you, because it also hated me. You'll be persecuted. The servant is not greater than the master. Therefore, you will also be hated. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Not they might persecute you. They will also persecute you. St. Pius X, they hated him. Absolutely hated him. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, one time traveling to South America, they put a bomb to blow him up. 
The bomb did not go off. And it was called with the most wicked words, hated and despised. The fact is that there will always be hatred for those that teach the truth and follow Christ. If this hatred is not there, then it is certain that we are not of Christ. It is certain. If the hatred is there, then we may be of Christ. For some of the enemies of Christ are also hated. Therefore, it's not sufficient that we be hated. But if we are hated, then we may be of Christ. If we are not hated, then certainly we are not of Christ. May, may they, uh, they, they, may they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have, if they have, um, but if they have heard my word, I any words. If they kept my word. If, 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 they, if they have uh, kept my word, they will keep yours also. They will keep yours also. The fact is, that we priests of God. As a priest of God, I have in me a divine power that comes from God, not from me. It comes from our Holy Mother, the Church. And when as a priest of God, I speak to you the divine truth. If you hear it, you will keep it. Why will you keep it? Because I speak the truth that Christ spoke. If they hear me, they will, if they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Now this is a very important point of the sacred marriage. The Holy Ghost inspired uh, the, uh, the uh, St. John, which gospel is St. John, inspired St. John to write these words. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. You know that one of the mistakes that we make we see it's all about the delivery. It's all about the delivery. If you give an interesting sermon, people like that. They're going to listen. And if you give a boring sermon, they're just going to fall asleep. And so the interesting sermon is exciting. Boring sermon is boring. It's all in how you express it. But our Lord Jesus Christ said to his priests, down the next 2,000 years, one priest seminary, one professor we used to have in the seminary, his name was Lauren. We used to call him Boren Lauren. It was metaphysically impossible to stay awake during his class. And he used to take a, uh, I won't say his last name, but some will know it. But he used to take a, a, a chalk, and he would stand in the classroom, and he would give a scripture class. And he, was, and he would talk, and he would say, the Bible is the word. And he would take the chalk and throw it in the air at the same height. And you want the chalk, go up and down. <laughs> And you would, you'd, I know hypnotism is real. So they would go up and down, and you would just be gone. And you know, the hours and weeks and months would pass, and sounds came from the front of the classroom, and then finally the bell rang, and it was the end of class. Now, what was in the class, I don't know, but it was downright boring from Boren Lauren. Some people were able to actually miraculously stay awake during the class, other people could not stay awake during the class. It's all in the delivery. But our Lord Jesus Christ says, no, it's not in the delivery. When Boren Lauren speaks the divine truth in the most boring manner, what happens? It changes souls. And when Arius, who was a great preacher, and when Adel Ab Abelard, another stinking heretic, who explained well his lies, when they spoke, uh, stood up and spoke their lies, people were interested in what they had to say, and it damned their souls. And now we have forgotten their lies. They are forgotten. It does not stick. What is it that makes the word of the priest stick when the word of the priest matches in teaching what Christ spoke? He put a divine power. A hand was placed, two hands were placed upon my head when I was ordained the priest. And then we were sent out to teach the word of God. And there was when, when, the, when my hands were consecrated, the hands were consecrated by the bishop, and it says, what these hands bless, it shall be blessed. What these hands consecrate, it shall be consecrated. And why is that? Because God put his power in these hands. And God put his power in my mouth. And God put his power in my whole being. And if I use it not, I am an enemy of God. But as the disciple and apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ, I must use his words and I must use his hands. 
They must use the feet to carry the Holy Gospel. And the power is there. Where is this power? It is not in the method. It is not in the style. Some give hellfire and damnation speeches. Some give nice speeches. Some give speeches you can't comprehend. But if the word is the divine truth, if the word is that of sacred scripture, if the word is that of our Holy Mother of the Church down the last 2,000 years, if the word is the repeating of the teaching of our ancestors, then whoever hears, whoever has the heart of Christ, will hear and will understand. He will hear and he will understand. We don't need great preachers. We don't need great leaders. All we need is to communicate the divine faith. God put the power. Doesn't matter how wimpy the bishop is, how ignorant the bishop is, as a bishop of our Holy Mother of the Church, he has the power to drive Satan out of souls. He has the power to drive Satan out of the church by simply speaking the divine truth. And the bishop of Rome still has that power to this day. And the great wickedness is that the bishop of Rome, the Holy Father, what has he done? He's made himself a man of the world. Christ took him out of the world. But he has dived back into it. He took the bishops out of the world and they have dived back into it. He took the priests out of the world and they have dived back into it. And therefore the world hates them not. And those that do hate them, hate them because of evil reasons. Because remember, the devil also hates his own. But only because of some kind of envy. But deep hatred is reserved only for Christ. Deep hatred is reserved only for God. That is the hatred of he who is the creator. And their hatred of his representatives that speak the divine truth. Now we have our, now just a few miles away from here now. Some Dominicans drove up with me last night for the St. Mass in Pittsburgh and then going on to Boston and going to the Northeast. And there's, uh, some, of the, some of the young men are gonna go over to the little conference there in Weirton and hand out little flyers at the Modernist Conference, 30 miles from here, wherever it is, not far away. And that the, uh, the Ide Catholic Identity Conference there has been a change in the laws of faith. What has happened? Our priests are now representatives of the world. Representatives of common opinion. Representatives of what we people have in common. And they are striving to make Christ acceptable to the world. He shall not be acceptable to the world. He shall not be. He shall never be. The world must hate Christ. And the world must hate his followers and there must be a persecution. And yet at the same time, there will be those. There will be those who wish to hear the divine truth. There will be those who want to receive the divine grace. And God will make sure that they receive it. But not through lies and compromise. Not through games. It is a great wickedness that is going on in the church. The priest says, well, I'm, going to, I'm not going to talk about the new mass. I'm not going to talk about Vatican II because they won't understand yet. I'm going to let them accept that for right now. And I'm going to take them one step at a time. I want you to stop being a homosexual. And I want you to go find some girlfriends. I want you to stop murdering people and start robbing banks. I want you to stop robbing banks and start robbing convenience stores. I want you to stop robbing convenience stores and just do some petty theft. Because I'm trying to get a person out of stealing. You used to rob banks. Not only robs convenience stores, that's a real positive thing. And now he's only robbing of individual houses, and pretty soon he's going to not be a thief anymore. We're going in the right direction. This is the thinking of the devil, the thinking of Satan. To choose a lesser sin, or what you think is a lesser sin, over a greater sin. To not go after the essential problem. The Vatican II is the heretical, wicked council in which the Holy Roman Catholic priests and bishops married the world. They already served Satan in their hearts, but they married the world. They dress like the world, they speak like the world, they think like the world, and they love and embrace the world. 
And they want the world to love and to embrace them. And what has happened? Has the world come into the church? No. The church has gone out to the world. So that one billion Catholics and the vast majority of them have left the church. The vast majority of them no longer go to church. The vast majority of them have left the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they accept to varying degrees the teachings of the world. And the priests have left and gone to the world. Now there are those that go to the world by putting on shorts and t-shirts and sunglasses. And in this way they go to the world to fit in. But you know there's also the artsy fartsy type. Don't forget about those guys. There are the ones that like the high muckety muck stuff. They like incense. They like nice cassocks. They like Gregorian chant. They have a better taste in music and they are of the world. So now there is a demonic part of the church which can give those worldlings the high music they want to hear. Give them the incense that they want to smell. Give them the Latin Mass that they want to see. And they will come in as worldlings into the Mass. And so this is called the indult. This is called the modo proprio Mass. To give to the world what they want. Don't give me an unbending, unchanging, immutable truth that everyone must follow. Don't tell me that we must completely reject the wickedness of the Council of Satan called Vatican Council II. Don't tell me we must throw out completely the demonic new mass. Don't tell me that we must accept only the 100 Roman Catholic Church is the only true church outside of which there is no salvation. Don't tell me I must accept all of the Ten Commandments. I don't want to hear it. You're too harsh. And if you said it nicely, I might believe it, but you're too uncharitable. You're not saying it the right way. Is that the problem? Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Just the word. We can say the word nicely. We can say the word meanly. But as long as we speak the true and divine word in its entirety without deception, then the word has power. Remember right now in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, because of its great wickedness of its members, the bishops and priests and the Pope especially, many souls are disgusted and they want to come back to a kind of tradition. And therefore Satan has set a net. One of them is 30 miles away from here. That is a net set by Satan. He has set a net to capture souls who would otherwise come back to the divine truth. No, you don't have to come back to the divine truth. We'll give you your Latin Mass. Don't come all the way to the sacredness of the divine truth. We'll give you a little bit of a candy. You can now receive sacrilegious Holy Communion on the tongue instead of seeing the sacrilegious Holy Communion in the hand. The new Mass is a sacrilege. And to receive Holy Communion in it is sacrilegious. So you have sacrilegious Holy Communion by those who are receiving it on the tongue from the priest. You've got sacrilegious Holy Communion by those receiving it from the hand, from the, from the, from the uh, deacon. You've got the sacrilegious Holy Communion, those receiving it in the hand, from the, on the tongue, from the girl who gives out Holy Communion. You've got sacrilegious Holy Communion by those receiving it from the priest, on the tongue, in the state of mortal sin, because they're living in their 12th marriage. Pick your sacrilege. Pick your way of being offending God. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants no offense. The new Mass is itself a sacrilege. To receive Holy Communion at the new Mass is to accept and participate in that great sacrilege. Now if you want to also add to it another sacrilege, and another sacrilege, and another sacrilege, you're just multiplying sacrileges. One is sufficient to be eternally damned. Now many souls don't, are not fully aware of this. We still are not fully aware because many soul, any soul with a clean conscience, when they go to the new mass over a period of years, recognize there is something wrong. There's something not of God here. The priests who celebrate this new mass with a clean conscience, trying to be obedient, after a time they realize, in very not very not very much time at all, there's something wrong here. There's something evil here. I must turn back to something better. I must go to God. And Satan knows this. And therefore, Satan puts traps. Satan puts nets. 
One of the nets is called the indult mass. This fake modernist movement of the neocons. This fake modernist movement of men who say, I don't like the spirit of Vatican II. I don't like the attitude of Vatican II. I don't like the people that travel around with that spirit. This is not a problem, a spirit, a mood, an attitude. A problem is an error and heresy and lie. A problem is evil, not simply a spirit, a mood, and an attitude. We're not fighting the spirit, a mood, and an attitude. We are fighting heresies and lies. We are fighting the wickedness going on in the modern world today. This is what we are fighting. And so, our Lord Jesus Christ said to St. Simon and Jude, who died martyrs. The only apostle that was not killed was St. John. And that's because it didn't work. They boiled him in oil. And he was preserved from it by the miraculous protection of heaven. And he is therefore considered a martyr. But they boiled him in oil, the apostle of charity, who spoke only of the divine love in his old age. And they boiled him in oil. We must understand that our holy religion is unacceptable to the world. That the Vatican II Church is a church that has married itself to the world. And therefore, the Vatican II Church, like unto the world, must hate us. And if the world hates us not, and the Vatican II Church hates us not, then it means we are not of God, but of the world. Hence we find the niceness of the modern church to Bishop Follet. Pope Francis says Bishop Follet is a very kind man who likes the man on the extremes. He likes the wounded duck. And he sees the society as on the extremes and a wounded duck. And therefore he has a love of the society. He's kind to the society. That same Pope that is wicked to the Franciscans of the Immaculate. And wicked to those others that stand for, that are moving in the direction of true tradition. Those who are moving in that direction who have not even arrived yet. He's most cruel to them. Most wicked to them. But kind to the society. St. Pius X. If the world loves you, if the modern Vatican II Church loves you, then you are not of God. This is what St. Paul says, or our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles. Now why have they hated me? For nothing. Why do they hate? They don't hate because we're condemning them. They don't hate because we speak a truth that they don't agree with. They hate because they already know the truth in their hearts and they're not standing according to it. Like the 900 pound lady that hates the skinny one. Why does she hate the skinny one? Because she's 900 stinking pounds. That's the reason why. So likewise, the people of the world hate the people of God. The people of the world hate the priest of God who stands for the truth, not because he's a priest of God, not because they are faithful servants of God, but because the person themselves who's of the world feels the guilt in his own conscience and knows that he personally is not standing for God, that he personally is standing against him. Therefore, he's angry. Doesn't therefore changing the way you speak to him, changing your tactics, doesn't solve the problem. It's the man of the world who must be pulled out of the world. He must leave the wicked spirit of the world, must leave the wicked thinking of the world, and come to Christ. This is what's necessary. At the time of Christ 2,000 years ago, and the time of his mystical body now, and until the end of time. Not possible without the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Not possible without her. We must have a great love of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who will give us the fullness of Christ, and like her son hates the world, so she hates the world. And as the world hates her son, so the world hates her, and wants nothing to do with her. They throw her out. That's why Protestants hate the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because she's too clean, She's too pure. She's too perfect. She's too much accepting only the totality of Christ. And they don't want Christ without impurity. The Protestants want Christ and they want impurity. They want Christ and they want to invent their own little lies. And they want their own private interpretation of the sacred scripture to have their own little perfect lies. And there are many hundreds of thousands of denominations that exist today. Therefore, they have no part with the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because she accepts only one Christ. Only one church, only one faith, and then brings all those who are not of that faith into that faith. Otherwise, they remain her enemies. And so they hate her without cause. 
They hate him without cause. And if we stand firmly under her mantle and stand firmly with her son, they will hate us also without cause. But we need not fear, as Christ himself said, and many men I say to you, they shall, they shall say all manner of evil against you. They shall persecute you and attack you and drive you from the synagogues. But I admit him and I say unto you, they shall not touch a hair of your head. They cannot harm us unless Christ allows it to be so. And that will only be at the proper time. Meanwhile, we must stand firm with the holy truth, speak that truth, condemn the errors, and recognize that there's only one way to Christ, and that is to speak the words and keep the word of Christ without alteration, addition, or subtraction of any kind. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.